welcome and all glory given to God in this moment. I attended a funeral on Wednesday for a friend of mine that had died in a car accident the Friday before. And it's the first uh, funeral that I've been to since I was in high school. And I was a mass server and I used to be part of that. Ever since I joined New Thought and became a spiritual person, I've only gone to memorial services. So I wasn't used to the casket and everything that went on. So it was quite interesting to see what happened. And it reminded me while it was going on of the last funeral that I was observed at least was when I, four years ago and I was in Guadalajara for a retreat. And those of us that were in a retreat we were downtown doing things and then we heard this music and we looked up and here was this band of people coming. Out in front was musicians playing all sorts of good music, Mexican music. And then they had the casket and then they had people in the back that were dancing. And then the funeral, and then the members of the family and other people behind it. And it was so great to see the joy and the love and the excitement that was going on in this sort of thing. So here we were at this church. And I knew that Don had a lot of friends, but I was amazed at the amount of people there. There was a big Christian church and there was over 150 people there from different groups that he belonged to. And I knew him because I'm a part of the Masons I just joined this past year, but he was the first one that I was given connection to because you have to connect with somebody for six months or a year and talk with them and get connected before you actually get brought into the, to the organization. So he was the one that I was connected to and I knew he was very open and, and very loving and joyful person and I had a great connection with him. And it was quite sad when, when the news came to me. So I want to talk about what happened that day for a couple of reasons that came out of it that I want to share with you. The first one is to talk about oneness. First of all, to see that we're in this Christian church and the service was led by a Jewish rabbi because Don was a member of the Jewish community and there were people that were parts of the Jewish community that were there. There were also members of his friends that wore Hawaiian t-shirts because apparently he did that a lot and they were told to wear Hawaiian shirts. And so the Masonic group, we all wore shirt, uh, suits, dark suits, and we were in the back room of this other building getting everything ready. And we had to put our aprons on, which is part of our beliefs. I'm not gonna get into that now. We had a head a band around our, our arm here and we had white gloves on. And it was very formal. First time I'd been involved in something like that. And so as we came in after everybody was sitting, we were all on the right hand side of the congregation and we came in two by two very formal to sit down and then the rabbi started the service and so he did a, a talk he did a little bit of a ceremony he did a spiritual reading a number of things and then four members of the masonic group went up there and they had um, these two poles with swords at the end of a, a metal rod at the end of it and they did a ceremony, and the casket was sitting down in front. And so they did a ceremony where they put flowers on top of it. For, and they talked about, um, I can't remember what they said at that time, but it was part of the ceremony that we needed to do. And then they came and sat down, and then the rabbi did some part of ceremony. He also put some flowers on the casket. And then that was it. So the, the uh, Masonic people, the Masons, all got up, and two by two we walked out to the front door, where the, where the hearse was at. And once we stood there, across from each other, then the people that carry the casket carried it out in between us. And the two guys that had the swords put them together like this, so it went underneath, so there was some spiritual meaning to that. And they came and started to put it into the hearse. And right after that was the family. There was his wife and his daughter and some other members of the family, and they were crying of course, a lot of sadness going on, and, and it brought up tears inside of me. And I normally don't cry at memorial services because I know that the soul's not there and it's gone on, but this was a whole different thing. And just getting caught up in the ceremony and the sadness and the, everything that was going on. So then after the, we just stood there while the rest of the people came out, another 150 people had to come out and they were talking to each other and chatting and so forth, and they were getting the hearse ready. And then finally the policemen were there and we all got in line as we went to the cemetery in Durango. 
And it was quite interesting to walk up the hill and see the other people coming in. And on the way, while we were, I, I was about the seventh car back, I think, from where I had parked. And on the way, we got to one corner and there was a store, I mean a shop there that was an auto repair shop. And the six employees of it came out and were standing there on the sidewalk giving honor to this hearse that went by, which I thought was really cool. And then down the street, there were some other people walking and they also stopped just for a little while while the hearse went by. And um, then we get to the cemetery and we walk up and there's members of the VFW, which he was a part of. <coughs> were all dressed in their uniforms too as well. And they were standing up and so there were all the seats set up for the family to sit on and the, the hole that was dug in the middle and there was a metal, the thing they set the casket on to lower it down into the ground. Um, then the Marine Corps, because he was a member of the Marines too, so the Marine Corps color guard were there. There was one guy that was standing up the hill at total attention holding a bugle ready for taps. There was another group up further back with their guns, their rifles for the 21 gun salute. And so then the, the hearse came back far enough to where the, the um, six people along with uh, the two color guards of the Marines helped pull the casket out. And then everything was really formal, how the Marines walked around very stiff and formal and took this casket and set it on top of the metal piece that held it for a while. And they waited till everybody was up there and I kind of looked around and just watched all the people that had come up the hill and all the different outfits and connection and just feeling the oneness of God with everybody. It was amazing for me to see that. And then once they got the casket over, of course, the VFW then did their ceremony, the guy that was in charge. And then the Masons got up and they did a little bit more of the flowers on the casket and it was all about from dirt we come, from dirt we go back, etc. that sort of thing. And then they did the 21 gun salute. And then the guy blew the taps and played taps, which is a very emotional song, if you've ever heard that before. And um, there was somebody else that had talked for a little bit. And then they lowered the casket into the ground. And they did this, and the rabbi had spoke for a little while too, to finish up his part of it. And then they did the ceremony that only Jewish people do, or that he said Jewish people do, and that is that everybody was invited to go there and pick up three shovelfuls, from one to three shovelfuls of dirt and throw it on the casket in the ground. And uh, so the first one to go up was his wife. And it was a bit emotional because she, as she took the dirt into it, she said, my heart, and then the second one was my soul, and the third one was my love. And then his daughter went up and said something and threw it in. And so then people started going. So by the time it got to the rest of us, we just did one. The family did three each. But it was so amazing to stand there and watch all of these people. And to think about oneness, about how everybody came together to celebrate the life of this person. And I started thinking about, it went from all the ones that fixed up the church and got it ready and put chairs up because after the ceremony I went back to the bathroom and they were taking chairs apart. Even though they're part of the church, they were there in honor of Don. Then the policemen that guided the cars that took us to the cemetery were part of it. The, the people from the auto shop that came out and stood there and honored him as he came by and the people on the street. Uh, the the people that worked at the cemetery that helped get the casket ready on top of the metal, the guy from the, from the home who helped run everything, the VFW, the Marines, the Masons, the Friends, all of these people came together. And I had a hard time with it a little bit at first because I'm knowing, okay, he's not there, he's gone back to home. And what this is, is we're honoring a life, but we're doing it mostly for us, not for Don, because he's not there anymore. And, uh, and it reminds me of what I've said before, like, why do we wait until we pass away when we do ceremonies like this? And to acknowledge, and after that was all over, they all went, those that were left went to the, the fairgrounds so that they had food and then they could all share and they're doing their talkings about Don and what they knew about him and so forth. I was there for a little bit and then I had to leave. So, it's interesting to see the ceremonies that we as humans provide for our lives, that we do for people, all sorts of different ceremonies. And to see this huge, huge, God, it was amazing. 
the amount of people that were caught. I'd never been to the one that big before. And to see somebody that had his life expressed in a bunch of different ways, his friends, the Masons, the VFW, the Marine Corps, etc., etc. And so I just felt God, I felt love, I felt energy going through every one of us that were there. So I talk about oneness a lot. And this again was a particular part of that that showed me about oneness. I mean, when you get together and you can look at other human beings and where they're at in their state of oneness and a connection and feel the energy, I could feel the energy of all these people that were there and the love that they felt for Don and the love that they felt for one another that they knew in different groups. And the Jewish group, I mean, the people that were there for that as well. So that was the first thing that came to me. The second thing was during the talk, the rabbi used three words, which I just talked about recently in this talk, and that was serve, love, care. For some reason, those three stood out to me, and I started thinking about that more like, okay, we look at serve like service itself. People are doing service to the government. They're, they're in the military. They do service. We do service to our jobs. There's even the word serve in tennis, and love is the first score that starts out. So it's interesting to have those words. And I started thinking about service, that we're here to be of service to God, to be of service to one another. We come here and we be of service to one another. How, what an important thing that is and how we need to pay more attention to it. And to, because how do we know how long anybody around us is going to be here at any time? I mean, this was, this was a bit of a shock that this happened in this car accident. And we need to remember why we're here. We need to remember to connect to the oneness of God that flows through us and be of service to God through the way we love other people, which is the second word. How powerful it is to have the word love, to make it uh, unconditional love, powerful love that comes from God, not just oh, I love you, but deep feelings of love, which I felt from the people that were there in different ways and in care. To be able to have love for another person, you want to have caring for that person as well. And for us in New Thought, we know a deeper truth, that our soul lives on. Don's soul is back with God, having a great time for the wonderful life that he lived. And the, and the caring that he gave to people and the love that he gave to people and the service that he did to people in the service and in the groups that he was in. Those are three very powerful words that we need to pay attention to. That's how Don lived. And almost 150 people came to honor him for the being that. Then yesterday, for lunch, I watched a gun smoke episode, which I like to do. And it was about this farmer, his wife and the two kids. And the farmer did not like to take anything, any help from any of the other people in the community. He felt like he needed to do it by himself. And it caused a lot of problems with his son and issues until his son, they were out arguing and he fell down a hole in the well. And the father grabbed the rope that, was, that had been around the middle thing to go down and get water because they did, dug this well. And the father's hands were burned from holding the rope. So he couldn't do anything. And the wife said, this is when you need to get help and sent the younger son to go to get Doc Adams to come out. But Doc wasn't there, but the, but the sheriff was, or the marshal. And he came out, he saw what was going on, and he called Festus to go in and get other people and get shovels and so forth. And this guy was like, I can't pay you. I can't do any of this, don't do this. And people were telling him, don't be so damn stubborn. <laughs> we're here to help you. And he had to give in. And all the people from town came out and they did all the work digging the holes to get down to get this child out. And the father had to learn a powerful lesson that it's, we're all here to connection. We're all here to help one another. We're all here to be of service. And we need to open up and receive that. And to be in love and connected to love and oneness and caring. So to end, I wanted to read a little bit of a talk I gave three weeks ago about this. No matter what we do or what we have done, we are temples embodying the glory of God. 
Any situation seen through the light of this understanding is miraculously transformed. So what I would like you to do is to close your eyes and imagine yourself as you appear in this world. See your physical body, who you are. And now see a golden light that radiates from your heart. Watch it extend from beyond your body. And it casts the light out into the entire world. To know that you, as the light you are, affects the entire world. Now, imagine someone else standing next to you. A friend or a foe. And see the same light within that person that you just saw within you. Watch the light as it grows to cover his or her body and extends beyond it. Now merge that light in the other person with you. And know that on the level of spirit there is no place where others stop and you start. So if you do this with other people, your relationship with that person will change because the energy has been felt. You are literally an idea in the mind of God, which is why you cannot be separate from God, even though we think we are. And the world you experience is an idea in your mind. It can't be separate from you. So this idea that we're separate, that we don't need help, you can open your eyes if you want. There's nothing but a hallucination. And yet that's where we live at times. In this illusion that you're over there and I'm over here. And I'm sure the people that were at that memorial or that funeral didn't know the other people. They only knew the few they knew from their group. They knew the connection they had there. But here's a whole lot of other groups of people coming in. The VFW and the Marine Corps, the Jewish community, all coming together. I'm here, you're there. Nope, we're not separate. That's the source of our pain in our life. And the ego suggests that the space will be filled. Well, if I get one special person in my life, then I'll feel better, or that space will be there. Or if I get a better house, or a car, or I do something, because we're thinking about the outside, and not the inside. And so think about this, beloveds. If you are one with everybody, yet you think you're not, imagine how many people you're missing out being with. I mean, think about 150 people there that got together and shared their light and their love with one another and expanded the connection, whether they were consciously aware of it or not. And we do that every time we come together. Think of the being one with all those people at the funeral and being one when we come here, whether we're here on Sunday or not, we're still part of the oneness. And so when we feel that, it's no wonder we feel such a hole, an emptiness within us because what we're missing is a right-minded relationship with all other people, all other people. When we feel separate from love, we feel a panic inside that's so deep we don't even recognize it. And our hysteria at that time of feeling aloneness is so deep we don't even hear our scream out anymore. And yet it permeates our being. And when we feel it, it demands we do something about it to get rid of this pain that I feel of being separate separate from God, separate from myself, separate from one another. And we try, God knows we do, in healthy and unhealthy ways to try to fill the hole. But what we need to do is surrender to the love, because that's what can fill it. We can surrender to service, to love, to caring. In God there is no escape, beloveds, for He sent the Holy Spirit to reunite our hearts by correcting our thinking. God can dismantle our thought system based on fear and replace it with a thought system based on love. That's where we want to be. He will give us a new mind which awaits us on the next stage of our evolutionary journey. And that new mind is called the I Am Consciousness. That's what we talk about here. The oneness of God, of I Am inside of us. This state of enlightenment is an exaltation of our existence. It's lifting our human consciousness to a higher level. So when we do that, when we raise it up and we feel the love and the light that we are with one another, we realize that we're not just like each other. We are each other. Because we're only one. That's all there is. It doesn't matter that the outside form looks different. We are 
each other. We are one with each other. And then we begin to find life outside the realm of love no longer available to us. It doesn't make any sense anymore. I can't go along with separation from one another. I can't go along without feeling this love inside. So in time, it will become literally unthinkable to live without love. And becoming unthinkable, it will cease to exist. And then we're connected. So here's a toast to my friend Don that brought these people together. A toast to all of us that are connecting to the oneness of life and the I am consciousness. Here's a toast to service, love, and caring. And here's to God within all of us. Namaste. Namaste.